I have the power. <laughs> hey, Hannah, go for it. <laughs> okay, in that case, let's start the um, community meeting for today. And I think the first point of the agenda are LT updates. Um, and we actually have a bunch of stuff. So um, the main thing is we, um, as you probably saw, we have announced, uh, saved the date for a seek week, which um, we plan to host from August 13th and 14th at Caltech in Pasadena in California, um, together with a um, one-day training event that will happen either the day before or the day after the conference. Um, there is no registration yet or anything else or a program or call for participation, but all of that will hopefully happen soon once we iron out more details. We mostly wanted to announce this so that people can save the date and yes, hopefully um, come to <clears throat> Los Angeles County um, with us. Apart from, so, uh, and a lot of our time was taken up with um, Seek Week logistics and discussing that and figuring out things. And that will probably um, continue over the next couple of months, actually. Apart from that, the LT had a um, little bit of a discussion with the Merge Masters. That's something that we do uh, semi-regularly where we um, meet the, the technical and the non-technical leadership of the project essentially meets from time to time and um, discusses things. Um, I think this time around it was uh, pretty technical. So we discussed like upcoming performance increase, um, improvements of Seek Windows builds, um, how the merge masters operate internally, which uh, by the way, in case you're curious, A, uh, Christian can talk about it and B, the answer is, um, there is not much structure, and most of what we do internally is completely visible on GitHub. Um, and um, we discussed a little bit how to get more people involved into the project. If you have opinions on that one, please let us know. We are hugely interested. And um, that's kind of it. And apart from that, um, let me see. I have notes, and I lost the window. Um, apart from that, I think the main other thing that happened is that um, we discussed if we want to do another project survey. If you remember last year at approximately this time, we had this huge survey campaign of the state of the SEEK project, and we probably want to repeat that this year, and um, we will announce details at some point of time in the future. And apart from that, um, we also talked a little bit more about the racing matrix, which we will publicly share sometime in the not too distant future. And I think that was it for LT updates. And as always, if you're interested in the work of the LT, our meeting notes are online in um, at community.seek.org in the Seek LT mode, uh, notes category. And we are always happy when people show interest. And that was kind of my updates. And uh, let's see, since um, Fatima, do you have anything to talk about for the training team or something like that? I am so sorry, first off, to join at such a late time. A, a meeting before this meeting just overran and I just saw your ping. So apologies, spoke. And let's see. So for training, um, we missed this um, last week's meeting because I was in Napa for our all staff retreat and um, Keith was also not there. So um, I think what we will be planning, or at least what I have in my mind is for next meeting, uh, we have two potential opportunities to provide training this year. So I think NSF Cybersecurity Summit announced their dates. So hopefully um, I will reach out to Jim and see if we can get a slot again this year at NSF to um, do the Zeke trainings that we did last year. And um, apart from that, um, I think we will have another week training coming up soon. Uh, um, and for that, I think the details are not pretty much confirmed yet. So I don't want to give any false information. So I just hold on to that. But yeah, we will have at least potentially two uh, training events this year. Um, and then we will uh, we'll announce the details more concretely when we have uh, them, you know, sorted out. So that's pretty much it. I, I don't have anything else unless Christian has anything to talk about on the training side. 
Um, not so much on the training side right now. I only have tech updates. But thank you, Fatima. No worries. Good right. stuff. Well, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Johanna. I think we need somebody to make the call on who goes next. And I volunteer Richard. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know that at what point we are at this in that meeting. So I was like, maybe somebody else is leading this meeting. So I was just like, I'm just going to keep quiet. So yeah, Richard, if you want to share updates on sure, the I, Yeah, I don't have any updates. So that's easy. And who's left? I don't know. Anybody left? Well, dang. <laughs> I think that's me uh, then, right? So I, I have a couple of things today. Um, it's been busy. It's been good. Um, so let's see. So 6.03 and 6.1.1 came out. Tim cranked out releases. Those are security updates and, and bug fixing releases, uh, particularly for the LTS folks. You, you do want to upgrade. You can see the full list of changes in the news file uh, for those versions or the release notes. Um, there's some stuff in there that's relevant. So you, you should take a look. I will not walk through them in detail, but it's it's different sort of things from build configuration to some sort of um, protocol analysis sort of buglets um, to other things. So it's definitely worth um, taking a look. And then um, other than that, we're closing in on the first 6.2 RC. Um, that is probably going to happen either next week or the week after. Um, there are still some final pieces falling in place for that. And I don't know, for those of you who are tracking what's going on into master, there has been some good stuff landing lately. So in particular, we've added WebSocket analysis. This is now in. This is thanks to Arna's work. Um, I wanted to give a shout out to the Jupyter team uh, in this context, the Jupyter Notebook team, because I think if we hadn't been in sort of a closer collaboration with those folks lately, then I think we wouldn't have sort of, you know, uh, prioritized working on this. Um, it came out of sort of an interest of theirs in looking at their own uh, Jupyter Hub installations for, for traffic analysis. But um, but anyway, so what you can do now is you can properly stack um, protocol parsers on top of WebSocket uh, analysis in, in HTTP. And you can do this in multiple ways. You can have sort of the typical DPD-driven protocol recognition, or you can uh, glom onto the WebSocket header that you know properly conveys what is the protocol that runs over WebSockets. And not only have we done that, we have also um, done that in both a bin pack implementation and a spicy implementation that basically allows us to compare things side by side because we're still learning a bunch of stuff about spicy. <clears throat> um, and I think this can sort of be a template for, for how we might do that for more protocols in the near future, where you basically want to sort of have the, the ability to sort of go back and forth between um, multiple implementations. So that's in now. I think that's pretty exciting. Uh, there have also been some improvement to um, the quick parser. Um, there's more work still on the um, performance front. So a pending change that is about to go in probably today is sort of deep in the guts of broker. Um, and this is something that Dominic's been working on. And it's changing the, um, the way we do serialization and unserialization, essentially using um, memory map buffers, monotonic um, buffers. And this is basically just avoiding a bunch of sort of copying out data and parsing it and doing more with the data as it is sort of transferred over the wire. And the reason we're doing that is that Dominic, uh, quite a while back, um, did some sort of point um, micro benchmarks and they look really promising, like three times faster. Um, that doesn't mean that Zeke is now three times faster. <laughs> uh, in fact, we don't have good measurements yet for what it really sort of yields in practice, but it certainly uh, should mean that that broker is um, a fair bit faster. Um, and so we'll be testing this a little bit further um, before sort of um, merging it properly into every sort of master branch and the projects involved. But but um, for anyone using master, it should be there hopefully later today. And then Tim's been busy um, on a bunch of stuff. I don't know much, how much I've um, sort of shared about that in the past, but he's working on sort of big projects to um, take functionality out of broker that doesn't really need to be in broker at this point. This is telemetry, this is storage, and he has a new prototype working now for a future key vials oriented sort of storage API with the first sort of prototype being um, an SQLite backend. So anyway, this is this is all pending work, but it's going pretty well and it's sort of you know in the works. Um, let's see if I had anything else on my list here. I don't think so. And Arne today, um, has a demo for us because he's been building a really fun Zeek package that gives you better visibility into what Zeek is doing in the script layer. Um, 
And with that, Arne, I'll just hand it off to you if you're ready for that one. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, I'm just going to screen share and show a bit. Um, reading a peek at the seek using curl and looking at providing data particular plane, gra plane graphs. Um, so, this could be my desktop. Can you see terminal? Yep, looks good. Maybe a little bigger. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Um, so, in the top one, there's a pickup, but much, it's just an HTTPS. So, a pickup with a lot of HTTPS requests and also DNS requests. Um, and if you were to profile performance, you would do something like curve record slash G, C slash R, and the pickup, and probably no checksums. And so if you run this, uh, seek runs, and, or seek is being this statistically profiled, and samples are being taken, so we see 22k samples. And um, what my workflow usually is to send this in a just a prof file <clears throat> in temp. And once that's done, I'm using the Firefox profiler. Uh, so if you in Firefox just type profiler.firefox.com, you get this page and you can load the file. Um, so we just generated. The Firefox profiler will then uh, give you that breakdown here. It also has the list of all the tests that have been running, but you should. Yeah, okay. They can say show all tracks, and then for every thread, you see sort of the activity of the S1 line here. But we are only interested in the main feed process. Production that one. Um, and then there's a tab for flame graph. So you get a flame graph and can look at uh, a break, break down where the samples landed. And for script in particular, there's this, well, there's event manager drain, and we can focus on that function. And you see, sort of, or you can also full screen it. Um, you see, and after drain, there's dispatch calls and after calling this page, there's event handler call. And the event handler call already is calling event handlers for various different um, well, events so from different files. Uh, and afterward, there's script function in both, um, which also belongs to event handlers. But we, we don't really see a breakdown on a file or which actual event handler was involved here. So that's when, when Justin sort of pointed us at the um, at the work that the Python that went into Python 3.12, um, and they they added support for curve chip maps, I think it's called, um, and that is available now as a package also for C, so you can do KG and install a seek curve support. This is live, so it works. Um, but once that's done. Yeah, it doesn't have script and CKG doesn't really like that. But there's no issue. If I run seek-n, I see at the bottom there's no plugin called seek curve support installed. And if I run that same command from before, um, the curve support enable is this true? So that's added by the plugin. Um, then there's a so there's a perf specific file generated in temp called perf, the perf dash pip and I hope it's the this one um that maps so yeah that there's some small trampoline or trampoline code generated when you enable this perf support uh, and those are essentially the functions of those little trampolines map to the event handler names and the file names. Um, so yeah, there's, I don't know, 1,200 or so of those entries. And if we run the 
the script command from before, um, that command automatically finds that curve map file and annotates um, entries in in this interval sizing output. So let's print that. This one is not a focus on the on the training again. Ah, okay. And we'll focus on in the part. So for that we had after invoke there was statement list exec. And you didn't really see the different files with uh, files and event handler names. And now we have, for example, the first one here is connection state remove. So we can see that 940 samples fell into connection state remove. Um, and the next one, well, it's also connection state remove, but at another location. Um, this is in DNS A reply. So yeah, you can now sort of, you, you now have a better breakdown where time is spent in SQL Trip time. Um, just by installing another plugin and setting this one option. I, and yeah, if you, if you're familiar with flame graphs and sort of have looked at this before, and I'm sure Justin can add to that, uh, that's that very valuable to just have at your fingertips. Uh, yeah. There's this one entry seek curve to port statement exit. That, that's in the flame graphs because of how the plugin works. And if you don't want to see this, you can sort of uh, but that's that's what I'm doing. I'm just prepping it all. Um, yeah. So then we open the file. It will just be gone because the, the output is lined up. Prepping it away. Yeah. Um, So, so now that the weird entry that added by the plugin is done. Okay, that's about all I had to show. Any questions or anything I should show further? Good stuff. Thank you for flagging that, Justin. That was very fun. Um, now we have a Zeek plugin that has assembly code in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you want to comment? I did actually try building this on a Pi, and I noticed you sort of have support. Do you? Do we need some additional testing on ARM CPUs? Yeah, certainly. So if you have an ARM, um, try to comment out that one. Uh, I, I think it's not compiling even currently, is it? Right, yeah, it, it fails because I saw you had the note. But I, I can certainly work and, and get that tested for you and see yeah. if, uh, I, if it works. I just copied the code from the Python change. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was, th this is something that's been on my radar as something that like we should do for years. And it wasn't until I saw Python announced it and it was like, well, if Python can do it. How hard could it be? And as it turned out, really not that hard once you know what to do. And uh, yeah, I've, I've played with this a little bit and it's already kind of showed me some interesting things. Uh, so yeah, this is going to, this, this, once this starts getting on people's radar, I feel like, I don't know if many people have seen a lot of the questions on the Zeke Slack about performance and troubleshooting. This is going to be huge for being able to, uh, e even if a, a, a user of Zeke doesn't know how to interpret the flame graph, the fact that they could generate it and share it and someone else could be like, ah, okay, you're using this script and it's working way too hard. Right. So even though this is very much a like developer focused tool, the fact that it's a single ZKG command that someone can install and provide the Zeek team with the profiles. And this is information that we just could not get. And, and this is going to be, I think, a game changer for understanding performance in the wild. So yeah, this is very exciting.
And Arne, it is in the package source at this point, right? Like that's that's yeah. why the okay, cool. So anyone can install it, assuming it builds. Yeah. Right. Okay, cool. It, it doesn't work on ARM right now, but yeah, yeah, right. Great to yeah. That makes sense. No problem. Cool. Yeah, even, Thank you very much. I even have a brand new Pi five that is expected in the next <laughs> day. So <laughs> it's it's been on my radar. Very good. Yeah. I yeah. Uh, I I wanted I, 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 not to shortcut this discussion or anything, but there's one more thing to mention that I forgot earlier. Um, Arne, you've been also busy at FOSDEM. <laughs> um, so for folks interested in checking out the FOSDEM recordings, Arne, you were at FOSDEM to talk about ZeekJS. Um, so there's a nice 15 minute sort of, you know, cookie on, on, you know, what it took to build that package or sorry, that, that plugin, um, and, and, and what it can do for you in Zeek. I just wanted to flag that. So thank you for doing that. Good stuff. I think that's all we had, folks. Um, back to you, Fatima, I think. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Arne, for the demo. Th that looks really cool. And um, I hope, yeah, if, if the package is available from G ZKG command line, I would not, uh, you know, find it difficult for people who are running Zeek in production to go and install that on their Zeek production cluster and see their performance and uh, what, what Zeek script is hogging their performance and whatnot. So... Um, thank you so much. <laughs> thank okay. you so much for showing that demo. I, I, I personally forgot. am curious now to try it. So yeah. Um, so I totally forgot there. There's the one aspect of this, Arna, is that this is very low performance impact, right? Yeah. So there are sometimes there are tools that you can't use in production. Like if you try running it, the performance falls off a cliff. This is the kind of thing that even on a busy sensor, on a production sensor this will not take your sensor down, right? You can still analyze traffic, it, you know, 1% or something. I, I, I guess we could test it and find out, but this, th this is suitable for even a, a very large install, uh, you know, with real world traffic. So yeah, not, not just for like a test sensor. Yep. Great point. I mean, there's, you know, there's all this fun stuff that we could talk about that, you know, you could, you could in the past build plugins that would basically sort of, you know, sample your, your script layer stack, but it, you, you really had to know what you're doing. It was really hard to do. It was very performance sensitive. This is at a totally different level. So it's really cool, but yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's cool because, you know, we always have that problem of who is watching the water. So um, it's good to know that at least the performance analysis package itself is not that performance intense. Otherwise it's just like, I just installed this package and now all of a sudden my Zeke just died. So that's good to know that it's not that performance. Arnie, do you I, have a comment? I, I, I haven't tested actually how much performance impact it has. It's basically another, an extra call for every function call, but it's from native, it's just native code, but I think it's acceptable. Well, it's, it's good to know that it's not that heavy on performance. So, and it's more on the, you know, you can deploy it in production without any problem and thinking about it's just going to bog down the performance. So awesome. Um, and it's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's also what other languages are doing or, or Python has added support and we're just using <clears throat> existing tools to make it work. Not something that, I don't know, the plugin is a hundred lines of code or something, but there's not so much to it. Really. That's, that's pretty cool. I always... I always learn new things when I join this call. So I am like, it's, that's my anecdote for every month that if I want to learn something new and cool, what's going in Zeek, just join this call and you'll just have that anecdote if you don't have a lot of time to follow Zeek um, on channels. So thank you so much for providing all these updates. Um, I think we are done with the update side of the things um, pretty much, right? Um, awesome. So with that, I believe that we are done for the day, unless people want to share any cool stories and Zeek anecdotes from their experiments and testings and whatnot. Happy to learn about bugs as well. So it, it doesn't have to be, Zeek is great all the time. It, it can be, oh yeah, you know, Zeek <laughs> had this internal bug that people don't know about and we should not talk about it, especially on a recorded call, but happy to know any kind of anecdotes people ran into recently with Zeek. A person, I mean, I am happy with the personal stories as well. So people, and we are still in the holiday mode. So at least I am. So if people want to share any of the cool stories. 
a tree fell on my parents' house over Christmas. <laughs> I'm sorry, Richard, to hear that. Where is, where, where is that? Uh, which area? Uh, up northwest of Boston. They're all fine. It's just uh, something unusual that happened. Well, that, that's good to know that everyone is doing good. <laughs> sorry to hear. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Zeke unrelated. Thank God. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, weather-wise, we are also not doing great here. Uh, I think there were some trees fell in Berkeley, downtown area, like South Berkeley, and people were um, injured. So, and it's been raining nonstop since the weekend. So it's, we have not seen sun in like past three days here. So I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Global warming is real. I don't know. So that's a personal kind of like weather anecdote from Berkeley. So Usually the weather is always good here and we always make people jealous that we are in California and it's always sunny here. What are you talking about? You have a snowstorm? No, it's all sunny. It's like 65 here, but it uh, looks like we also have a gloomy weekend. So, all right. Well, I know we are almost top of the half hour. Um, unless anything else people would love to share, I think we can adjourn for today and hopefully meet next month. All right. Well, thank you again, folks, everyone to, uh, you know, come and join this call. Uh, we really appreciate all the participation we get. And yeah, we will look forward to see you guys next month with all the other cool stories that we, we get. All right. Well, with that, thank you so much, everyone, and have a good day. And please stay safe. Bye. Thanks, all. Bye. Bye, folks. <clears throat>